enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Base the Kid. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, um, a close family member, an associate, an enemy, anyone in between. I appreciate all the views, I appreciate all the comments. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Right, so I'm actually on my way to a wedding a little bit later on today. So I probably won't be up to date with all the latest movies and shakings that's going on. So I figured let me just do another quick video um, on some of the previous topics that have come up. As you can probably hear in my voice, overnight I've uh, caught some kind of bug, probably from overtraining or whatever. But you know, it is what it is. I've got to try and keep my distance from people for the next 48 hours. I should be all right, good to go and all that good stuff. Couple bits and pieces to talk about. So without further ado, let's get into it. So unfortunately, it looks as if we're gonna have to wait for a significant fight within the water weight division, which used to be one of our glamour weights, but unfortunately now it is just the weight division as Virgil Ortiz has once again um, fallen down to the rhabdomyolysis, which affected him in uh, the bout he was supposed to have with Michael McKinson back in 2021. I think it was. Um, yeah, so Imanta Stanionis uh, postponed their fight initially with an injury or illness. And now um, Virgil Ortiz has done the same, which is a shame because I was looking forward to that fight. Uh, 29th of April, it was one of the tasty ones on the zone on the zone platform. So now I don't know if they're going to do a keep that card running with something else and then just reschedule that fight or if they're going to pull the entire card off the schedule but it's unfortunate and I think at this point they say that that happens when you're coming down too too quickly in weight um, not you know not maintaining your weight and doing it the right way so at this point um, Ortiz has got two options he's either got to hire one of like the best nutritionists around to make sure that he can actually make weight properly or he's got to move up to 154 it's got to be one or the other because clearly if you're putting your body through the stresses causing you this kind of pain and this kind of issues like you're actually damaging your body and at the age of what 25 26 like is it really worth like you know killing your body at this at this early stage of your life like do things the right way get a nutritionist get that kind of sorted out because we want to see these fights so yeah like sort it out unfortunately this one gets pushed back i was looking forward to it but i guess we just gotta wait for something else at this point so there's a nice little competitive beef forming between um Fabio Wardley and David Adelier, which um, I'm finding very entertaining. I've watched two interviews from Adelier over the last um, over the last day or so. One of them was, I think, IFL TV. I think it was a Umar interview, and the other one was from um, Rack Noble from Boxing UK. So shout out to them as well. Um, he's talking very very spicy. Um, Adelie is not, you know, he, he the way he's coming across is very matter of fact, very road, very street, very, you know, what I just, you know, I just want to punch man up, take his belt, like, and I like it. And ultimately, he's saying, you know, he's saying that, you know, I ain't got no beef with him. Like me and him is cool people. He ain't done me nothing, so it's not nothing personal. But he's got something that I want, and there's levels to this, and I'm above his level. Now, when I hear that. You did have, a, you know, he had a bit of amateur pedigree, so I can give, I can give David that. Like he did have that on his side, but I mean, I don't know if you can necessarily say that your levels above him when you ain't even competed for an English title at this point. You know, I mean, Fabio ain't necessarily had um, the the wealth of experience maybe that you have, but I mean, he got to the English, he got to the British. 
you know he's the reigning British champ uh, he fought some pretty good competition along the way you know there's no one on your record that is of a standard of even Eric Molina at this point um, the the Bezos brother that you fought I mean we don't really know his his levels to be honest we all know what happened with Sokolowski um, whether you whether he was potentially injured or not or had issues or whatever uh, you know everyone knows that was a gift decision I don't know how many times Fabio's had a gift decision I mean there's been times when maybe he's done some questionable things in the actual fight but it always ultimately ended up in a knockout so yeah I mean it's hard to say that you're above his level when you haven't had even half the accomplishments he's had at this point it looks like Frank Warren's kind of got David again that WBO global continental route at the moment to almost circumvent those other those other belts to, to get himself into some kind of world title position but there's work that he's doing domestically I mean look him and Solomon Dacus good fight I mean if he thinks that he's near enough around that level right now him and Frazier Clark is a good fight him and Fabio is a good fight um, that's pretty much his level uh, I don't know uh, he's probably a bit ahead of someone like Johnny Fisher at this point but that's the circle you're mixing in so I can't really condone or agree with a man saying that his level's above these guys when he's got nowhere near the accolades or fought the, the calibres of opponents faded or otherwise as of yet um, you know he's, he has been fed a careful diet of, of opponents thus far and that, that used to be one of Frank Warren's uh, best attributes was his matchmaking making sure that people got the necessary steps where, ne where needed where someone like Eddie Hearn would just kind of match you tough from the start and see and see if it's sink or swim um, but more recently I don't think Frank has necessarily been quote unquote matching correctly I think he's been matching to the level of his purses um, I think that's probably the, the nicer way to say things so we won't necessarily know um, where David's at until he gets in there with you know one of those other XGB guys or the British the British guy title but ultimately I like I like the Wardley fight for him so I want to I want to kind of see that um, he pulled up on him at the press conference yesterday basically saying the old like yeah come as soon as you finish with coffee let's do this thing Fabio was like okay so when are you going to be ready he's like I'm ready whenever like don't worry about me I'll stay in the gym and they try to throw little shots when no, I'll come over but bring it over to BT in it because nobody ain't watching on the zone that same old talk and rhetoric I tell you this though it's much cheaper to watch the zone than it is to watch BT Sport and at least with the zone you can do the month in month out thing before obviously $7.99 $1.99 now $9.99 if you if you commit or $19.99 if you just do the month but that ain't much cheaper that's not um, that much difference to a natural BT Sports subscription it's not the it's not cheap at all and you definitely can't do it on day passes like you can for Sky Sports um, so yeah as, as big as the platform is for football purposes and whatnot like it's not the most cost-effective <laughs> way to consume content um, so yeah I mean I know David's probably just you know back in back in the hometown you know for lack of a better phrase or whatever I get it it's cool it's all bants and all of that but realistically no matter what he says if he has if he's gonna fight for the British he's gonna fight on the zone because I know I know Eddie is deaf of all the things he's definitely not gonna lose that purse bid like he, he won't let that one go to away territory like there's some that you think to yourself oh, I never thought he'd lose that's one that he definitely won't lose especially when his guy's gonna take the lion's share whatever he has to do to make sure that Adelaide ends up on his side as the uncomfortable B side that's what he will do so yeah but ultimately I do want to see that fight um, I like the spice that's going on between the two of them like nothing nasty at the moment but just very competitive very saucy um, and I just want to see more of the back and forth um, I saw Fabio Woodley um, reacting to uh, 
Adelier's interview with Umar he says yeah I'll punch him up <laughs> with the Dillian White laughing from when uh, Deontay Wilder got beat up by Tyson Fury in the second fight um, all fun and games I like I like what's going on between the two of them on, on Twitter so long may it continue and we'll see where it heads moving forward so Devin Haney versus Vasily Lomachenko has now officially been made for the 20th of May or May 20th uh, as they say in the US um, now it's was supposed to be initially just on regular ESPN um, and ESPN Plus but now looks like it's had to go to pay-per-view I guess to satisfy the financial demands of both fighters but to be totally honest in a world where pretty much anything can pass for pay-per-view in the states this is one of those fights i actually think is worth it now it's coming at the price point of 59.99 um, as opposed to the normal sort of like 74 79.99 in the us and it's going to be on sky sports over here in the uk great news for everyone in the uk unfortunately I'm actually flying to the States on the 19th of May. So for me to watch that fight, I'm going to have to fork over that $60. Um, or I guess I'll maybe I'll have to go to a bar or something where they're showing it. I'll have to see how I'm going to make that one work. I'm also going to have to let the zone know that I'm traveling internationally that day. Or, you know for a period of uh, a couple weeks so that my my zone subscription can transfer from the US, UK over to the US uh, make sure that I can watch all the fights obviously I've paid for within that month which should be a, a fairly interesting and arduous process but I, you know now that I've been on the platform and they know me hopefully that should uh, get me uh, some some preferential access to to help and support but um, yeah, look, back to the fight. I mean, it's been in the offings for a while. I know that Devin Haney wanted to have that fight before Ramadan started. I don't know if he's actually going to be partaking in Ramadan properly um, or if he's going to have it sort of deferred to, you know, later on in the year or he's going to do a donation because obviously within Ramadan, if you, if you don't partake in it, you can... Forego partaking by you know giving money to charity or you know essentially paying um, for the privilege not to actually do it. So, um, but as he's a sporting athlete, they also say you can move it to um, another date and what whatnot. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see how all of that in itself affects him. Um, it could necessarily be one of those players to maybe try and get more of an advantage or even an even playing field for Vasily Lomachenko given that Devin Haney is way way bigger than Vasily on a on a normal basis so if you can maybe you know affect his training for a couple months drain him down a little bit you know it it's possible you know these tactics these things can they they can take place but uh you know at the end of the day signed the contract so you know no excuses are valid no niggles no injuries you sign the contract if you're injured you pull out if you are um you know not a hundred percent then realistically you pull out as well um so if you go through with the fight win lose or draw go own that i got no issues with it um but yeah that's a very very good day's worth of action Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron to start off the day Vasily Lomachenko and Devin Haney to end it um, and then probably hit the club afterwards <laughs> depending on how the results go uh, might be the way to go but yeah um, so it's been a while since that fight has been in the, been in the offs and been in the makings but I'm happy that it's here now so yeah onwards and upwards looking forward to it and now i just gotta try and plan how i'm gonna actually get to see it uh, whether i'm gonna have to fork over the money whether i'm gonna be able to purchase it through regular espn at the hotel or if i'm gonna have to sign up to espn plus for a month for content i won't be able to watch as soon as i come back to the uk but just spend the spend the extra ten dollars and and get it that way but yeah we'll see 
Now, I didn't really want to touch on this one too tough because number one, it's not particularly boxing and I don't know a huge amount of the details. But obviously, a few days ago, it came out that Jermaine Franklin um, was basically putting in a lawsuit against Dimitri Salita and Salita Promotions um, for, I guess, essentially the level of uh, percentage they're trying to take from his purses uh, for fights that they're not actually um, putting on or negotiating or whatnot. Um, I can't remember the exact verbiage of, of the actual lawsuit itself. However, the only reason I'm even highlighting it, because obviously Dimitri Salita came over on, uh, I think it was Tuesday, and he was at the press conference yesterday um, alongside, obviously, Jermaine Franklin and that. Now, the two of them didn't necessarily look too, too friendly with each other. Um, Jermaine wouldn't really speak about it on Monday during like you know the press conferences and the interviews that he was having uh, I know Dimitri said something along the lines of I'm not worried he doesn't have a leg to stand on or something along those lines so it's definitely I'm only even highlighting it because I just feel like in this phase of things i mean obviously i know he's probably not even really thinking about it too tough but that's kind of the last thing you want to have going on in and around you with the person that's supposed to be you know backing you and showing favor in the biggest fight and the biggest week of your life um professional life at least obviously i don't know what man's like personally and all that but yeah it just just seems it doesn't really seem all that great the only but the thing is I know that Dimitri Salita kind of has some form with things like this because if you, if a lot of you remember, um, Jarrell Miller had issues with Dimitri Salita. I'm not sure if it was with the AJ fights or if it was with one of the fights after AJ, but he was literally on the table. Like uh, I think it was like a promotion that uh, that Dimitri was doing. And you know, Jarrell kept saying to him, like, keep my name out of your mouth, don't talk, don't mention my name, like, because and he was getting real animated. So, I don't know, he said it was something about you know, uh, Dimitri owing him money or not giving him the money that he was due or taking some money from he didn't think he owned. So, yeah, it's obviously, I don't know how these contracts play out, I'm not trying to get involved in that, but if you got you know so many of these people that are underneath your promotional banner having issues um it doesn't really look great now jermaine from what we see doesn't really look like someone that you know causes problems when necessary you might be able to pass jerome miller off say oh he just he just talks or whatever but with jermaine it's a little bit different so yeah i just feel like that whole thing needs to get squared away um i hope that's not something that's on his mind come fight night and that he puts on the type of performance that he needs to put on to keep himself in and around the top um you know despite what whatever happens after that but um yeah i just thought i'd mention it just because obviously between the two of them it, it looks a little shaky when they're on when they're on stage together but look i'm gonna leave it there because i've barely managed to get through the se segments i've given you um i apologize energy is not where it needs to be but i'm sure you can hear it in my voice uh, yeah this is a bad one i'm gonna have to sleep this one off um dose up because as i said i've got a wedding to go to and this has come just as i'm about to go to the wedding so hopefully i'll make it through the rest of this day and i can get through the friday and be able to make it obviously to the event on saturday and beyond because it's actually a very big weekend outside of just the aj franklin fight but we talk about that on the weekend wrap but thank you very much for watching and for rocking with me again please like and subscribe and all that good stuff and for now it's a hardcore casual out <laughs>